Hello, my name is Julio Alvarado Jr. Let me first of all thank you for taking the time out to uh, watch this video. I'm not sure where you're watching this video, but uh, let me just share with you that if you go to my website, which is www.julioalvaradojr.com, you'll get this and other teachings um, that you'll have access to in video and also audio form, as well as some articles that I write uh, for Thy Kingdom Carriers magazine, which there's a link to that on my website, by the way, if you're interested in that. But today, uh, I wanted to uh, teach uh, a small lesson, um, and when I say small, sometimes it can go a little bit longer than desired, but this is a topic, I believe, that is very important. Um, to me, I put this topic up with the topic of truth, which I'm very passionate about. Um, and when I say truth, I'm not talking about from a, non, from a traditional or even a religious standpoint. I'm talking about from a original, God-intended, um, Hebraic understanding of what these words mean. Um, because I believe that when we look at what faith is, and also I'll be sharing what faith isn't a little bit, that really, and I'm kind of going ahead of myself, our faith should eventually get to the place where it it's only activated by what God tells us and shows us. And by that, what I'm saying is that just because I have the potential to believe something, it does not mean that I should have faith for it. As an example, let's say if I'm thinking that, well, you know, I, I can believe that I can make a million dollars. You know, just because I can believe in that, did God tell me or show me that? Otherwise, I should not put uh, my faith in that. And the reason why I bring that up and why I'm kind of sharing on this topic is because there's a lot of teachings on faith and what it is and what isn't. And a lot of that is good. But some of it, I'm going to be real with you, some of it to me is, um, for lack of a better term, is contaminated with selfish desires uh, with man-made doctrines, with perhaps even ignorance. Maybe they were taught that way, and so, once again, they're just kind of reproducing or reteaching what they were taught. But I want to look at it from a more impactful level and understand, and, you know, with the understanding that Jesus was the most faithful man that pretty much walked this earth. And if that was true, which I believe it is, then His faith was based off of what he heard and saw from the Father. And what he put his belief in came from information that he heard and what he saw. So in other words, he had the right to believe in that because it came from heaven. And that's why it's important to understand that really faith, we should only put our faith in things that literally come from heaven. And that's for anything. That's for finances, healing. Um, that can be for once again for your spouse or any different topic. And so, and I also wanted to kind of differentiate the understanding of faith and belief. You know, I can believe in something. Like for example, um, let's say my car. I believe that if I put the key in the ignition and start it, it's going to start. I believe that. You know, because I've done it over and over and over again, and that's what it's designed to do. But the reality is, if just by me believing in it does not make that car start. I have to physically go and do something, put the key in and turn it, in order for it to happen. And I bring that important point up is because a lot of times people are guilty of having a faith for something and yet doing nothing to manifest that thing in your life. And when we look at the life of Jesus, everything that he had faith in, he did something about. In other words, he expressed what he believed in based off of his obedience and his actions. So, you know, once again, that's just a, 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 a pre-entry point to this topic. Let's go into this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, pretty much biblically, I guess, uh, defines what faith is. And it, and it reads like this. Now, faith is the substance or the tangible stuff of things hoped for. 
It's the evidence of things not seen. In order for us to understand faith, we have to define faith. Now, once again, just kind of paraphrasing this, faith is something that is it's a substance, is tangible. I mentioned to you earlier that Jesus was able to hear and see things from the Father. That was the tangible stuff. He was receiving uh, uh, instructions and images, you know, uh, visionary objects and stuff like that, that he would actually, once again, that is what he put his hope in. So even though it wasn't naturally seeing with his outer eyes, in his inner eyes, he was able to see it. Let me just say this, by the way, too, on that topic, that the reality is the purest form of vision is manifested on the inside before it is manifested on the outside. Now, they, that might be elementary to you, but nowadays people have it backwards. They go ahead and they build something or they do something, and then they say this was the vision of God without even getting the details of what they just built or what they just did from God. And I'm thankful that they give God the glory, but what if God didn't tell them to, 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 to build that or to do that? You know, then once again, that was, they believed that, but they didn't have what I call kingdom faith. Kingdom faith comes from the kingdom of heaven. You know, when you're a brand new believer, we have what I call baby faith. You know, you become, you're introduced into uh, a belief, you know, um, and you're going, and you can, people, you know, you read stories in the Bible, or you read stories through different books, and, you know, you put your faith in that. You know, that's what we call it. You know, but really you're putting your belief in that. In other words, you're saying, okay, so-and-so has said that I should believe in this. So because so-and-so said it, then I'm going to put my belief in it. And then, you know, it becomes part of your belief system. Well, faith is a different level of belief. You know, when Jesus would walk around and heal people, he would say, your faith has made you whole. Now think about that. It wasn't just their belief. These people must have imagined themselves whole or healed. So internally they were able to see themselves complete or whole or healed. So in other words, they got that belief from something in, in, you know, internal. You know, I'm reminded of the story of the man who was blind in the Bible, and, and this is just a side note. But Jesus touched him. You know, he, he ministered to him and he said, what do you see? And, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, I see men walking as trees. Now this man was blind. So where did he get the image of men walking as, as trees if he had never seen before? But he must have gotten information through his ears, you know, people describing what a tree looked like, people describing what a man looked like, and he, maybe he put that together. And that's all he can come up with because he had never seen before. And guess what Jesus did? Uh-uh. You know, he didn't say it like that, but you know what I'm saying? He touched him again because the healing or the restoration of his sight wasn't done yet. And then he said, now what do you see? And at that point, he saw accurately. So once again, he had faith in simply in what he was exposed to. And that's why he came up with the, I see men walking as trees. But then he was really, you know, able to see, and he saw accurately, and that now he can put his faith into something that was a little bit deeper than maybe what he originally thought because inside he would imagine himself seeing. And so that was where his faith was at. Do you understand what I'm saying? But so once again, that was evidence of things that had not yet been seen from him externally. So when we look at faith, in the Greek it's the word pistis. Uh, uh, people are famous for defining faith uh, based off of this Greek word. And it just simply means persuasion or the truthfulness of God. And that's a, that's a powerful uh, definition. In other words, the truthfulness of God really is what should persuade you, right? Now notice that's a key statement there, key definition, because the truthfulness of Julio shouldn't persuade Julio. Otherwise, I'm guilty of producing my own will. So the truthfulness of God should persuade me. That's where my faith should be at. And where do I get this truthfulness of God? From the truth source himself. That's from the speech or from the mouth of God, from what we call the rhema of God, the ruach, the spirit of God. You know, so once again, that's what faith is in terms of from the Greek perspective. Now, when we look up the word substance, it's this word, and this is once again, I'm going to maybe mess this up, but it's pronounced 
hubos, hupostasis. And I apologize for messing that up, but it means a setting under a support or foundation, assurance, or confidence of. So in other words, it's something that you can be supported by. It's a foundation. That's why when, whenever Jesus would hear information from the Father, that was, you know, uh, uh, he could stand firm on that, and he was assured and confident, and he could put himself under that, because once again, it was something tangible that he was able to hear and see, and then with his inner eyes, you know, uh, and inner ears, you know, be able to put that all together so when, that ex when he was able, walking on the earth, he was able to once again manifest that faith based off of, once again, truth information that entered him from God. I like to put it this way. God should only be the faith source of our lives. The same statement, of course, should be for truth. God should only be the truth source of our lives. And um, if you haven't seen my teachings on, on truth, please make sure that you find them. Uh, go to my YouTube page or to the website and you'll see a link to them. But you'll see how faith and truth interact and how they're connected. You really can't separate truth from faith. Okay? And that's very important to understand. A lot of what is being taught about faith today is unfortunately has to do with if you have the power to believe it, then it's yours. You know, but once again, what if it's not your will? Or excuse me, what if it's not God's will? Let me, let me, let me <laughs> correct that. What if it's not God's will for you to believe in that? And that's why it's important that our faith be built on what is seen and heard from the Spirit of God. And by the way, uh, that's why it's important to learn to hear the voice of God. And later on in other teachings, I'm going to be sharing some insights into that. Um, I'm going to be publishing a book in the future on, on the topic. But prayer is something that, once again, I believe has been um, misunderstood as well. You know, and by, by that I mean, um, I, I, I tell people this, and people kind of look at me, you know, a little bit crazy with a crooked eye. But do you know that Jesus, who is our model of a human on this earth, never prayed for things, and yet humans, especially believers, do it all the times. They do it all the time. They pray for things. Jesus never prayed for money, spouses, and cars, and all that other stuff, you know. And in a future teaching, I'll, once again, you just can't, by the way, don't pick a verse and say, well, here it says, whatever so, uh, you know, whatever so I desire, I can pray for that. No, don't just pick a verse. We have to look at the whole counsel of God and to see what that really means. And once again, in a future teaching, I, I would love to uh, share that with you. But once again, uh, Jesus simply sought to fulfill the kingdom of God for his life, and all the things that he needed were added to him as a result. Believers nowadays do it differently. They seek the external things and attach them or add them to themselves, and then they say, God bless me with this. And the reality is they bless themselves. And once again, it's nice that you gave God the glory, but once again, we have it backwards. The mandate in our lives, according to Matthew chapter 6, I believe it's verse 33, is that we're to seek the kingdom of God first and His righteousness, and all of the things that we need or pertain to life are going to be added to us. And there's a little of paraphrasing in there, but once again, there is a, there's a, there's a, a process that we have to put, because really, when we pursue the kingdom of God and His righteousness, much of what we're supposed to have faith for, actually all of it, comes from that thinking, that process. But let's continue on here. Faith, the word hope here. The word hope, and once again, this is off of the Greek understanding, is the word elpizo. It means to expect or confide or trust in. It's an expectation of what will come. Now, once again, we have what we call wishing. When you wish for something, it doesn't mean it's going to come. Kind of like when you blow out some candles on a birthday cake. It doesn't mean that that wish is going to come. But when you have something that comes from the portal of heaven, and it's introduced into your spirit, and God told you or showed you that, then you can have expectation that it will come. And that's where you should put your hope in. Think about that. You know, even, um, uh, and I'll just keep, give you a quick testimony. A while ago, I used to suffer from sinus infections and, you know, allergies. And one day, and this happened a few years ago, by the way, I decided to change my mind about that. So I said, wait a minute, you know, I'm a believer. I'm praying for myself to be healed from these because every year they would come up. 
And all of a sudden, you know, it was like God began to give me insights that if you would just change your thinking about some things and not expect that what, now that winter is coming, you're going to receive, you're going to get sinuses or not expect to get allergies when the summer comes up because I was expecting that my hope was in the allergies and in the sinuses. Do you understand what I'm saying? But then I changed my mind and I expected healing. And so once again, I imagined what that looked like. And so ever since then, no more allergies, no more sinus issues. And I'm walking around, you know what I'm saying, absent of those things today. Because once again, God gave me insight into the fact. In other words, I put my faith in that as opposed to my faith in what was or belief into what I was doing or waiting for the seasons to happen to say, oh, here it comes. Let me go to the doctor, get my prescription. You know, once again, not necessary today. So once again, continuing on with this teaching. Uh, the word believe in the scriptures. I want to make sure that I expound on this word because a lot of people link up the word believe with the word faith. And, and yes, we're supposed to be, uh, 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 believe or, you know, have uh, for what we're supposed to have faith in and vice versa. But the reality is this word pistio, which is once again, if you look at it, it's kind of similar to the word pistis. It means to have faith or put trust in. But the, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. The word believe in Hebrew now is the word shama, which means to hear intelligently with implication of attention and obedience. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The reason why I want to make sure that I bring this word believe and introduce it into this teaching is because our belief structure should really be based off of, for the most part, and actually eventually for the whole part, what we hear intelligently. Uh, I'm not sure if you caught that or not. In other words, to hear intelligently is to hear from God. Think about that. My belief should be based off what I'm hearing from God. That's hearing intelligently. Now, externally I have my outer ears. I can hear, you know, someone and, 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 and get some knowledge and some intelligence from that source. But here I'm talking about uh, when, it, when we look at the implication or attention or obedience to my belief structure, once again, has to come with the implication of me attending to and being obedient to what I'm hearing from God. And let me, un let, let me once again, kind of give you a little bit deeper understanding, clarity on that. One of the root understandings of the word understanding is defined as to hear intelligently. When you hear intelligently, make sure you look at my truth uh, teachings on this, because um, I talk about what truth is. Uh, to hear intelligently, you have to hear knowledge. But it just can't be any knowledge. You know, knowledge has to be of a truth source. That's God is a God of truth. So to hear intelligently is to hear from God because he's the highest form of intelligence that we know of. I'm not sure if that makes sense to you or not. But the word believe here, in other words, what I should be believing in, what should I have faith in, should come from a place of intelligence. And that's why, once again, I'll, I'll always go back to the model, Jesus. Jesus believed, or Jesus had faith in what he heard and saw from the Father. Now, when we look at uh, uh, um, Jesus himself, Jesus only had faith in what he heard and saw from the Father, as I just quickly said here. Just because I have the faith and ability or the potential to believe in something does not mean that I should have faith in, uh, for it once again. I mentioned that already, and that's very important. You know, when I began to study this and, and look at this, it really changed my mind. I realized, you know, just being honest and being transparent with you, that I had a belief structure that wasn't built off of the origin of God. It was built off of my own thinking, my own desires, and also from other things that people had introduced into my life. And once again, I'm not knocking you know, uh, uh, desires that you may have, but the reality is our desires should be founded on the will or the purpose that God has for our life. And that's a completely separate teaching. But the understanding is if we had a mindset of that, in other words, if we understood why God created us, our belief structure would change, by the way. Our faith would be in things that would happen. 
I'll give you an example of something uh, uh, that uh, people, and this is just an example. I know of people that have faith for a house, for example. And here they are praying, God, I want this house, I want this house, I want this house. And they have the address, they, they, they walk through the house with the realtor, you know, they went through all the paperwork, all the finances and everything, and they, they say that they have faith for that house, that God wants to bless them with this house. And all of a sudden, something happens where the deal falls through. Well, was that from God? Because if it was from God, it would have happened. But what happens is that they move to the next house. Well, maybe God saw something here that maybe uh, uh, was going to be wrong. You know, there's going to be a leak in the basement or a foundational issue or something. You know what I'm saying? And so they begin to make excuses for what they had supposedly their faith in. I hope you understand what I'm saying. In other words, when God gives you something that you're supposed to have faith in, it'll be right the first time. And if it's something that is contaminated and God doesn't want to have you faith, God doesn't want you to believe or have faith in it for, then once again, if you position yourself to hear from Him, He'll tell you, my son, my daughter, I don't want you to have faith for this. That's not for you. That's just an example. Okay, or how about this one? Uh, and this might be, you know, I apologize if I'm offending anybody, but let's say someone has faith for healing, you know, and um, let's say it's some kind of lung disorder, and they're getting prayed, laid hands on, and everything, you know, and oil, you know, anointed with oil, and prayers are being made, and people interceding for them, but yet they continue to smoke, you know, um, that doesn't line up. You know, so in other words, here you're praying to be healed from this lung condition that probably your smoking habit contributed to. Do you understand what I'm saying? So just believing that you can be healed from something does not mean that it's going to happen. It has to come from uh, God telling you, I will heal you of that if maybe you quit smoking. Maybe if you do your part, I'm ready to do mine. Is that possible? So once again, what is faith? Faith really is a belief, a persuasion that really should originate from the mouth of God. That's the reason why God gave us the spirit of truth. The Bible says, and Jesus said it himself, that the spirit of truth will uh, tell you all things, and show you all things to come. You know, and that's just paraphrasing there. But once again, we have what I call inside information if you're a spirit-filled person and that that force that power that voice of God will really tell you what you should have your faith in and what you should not have your faith in let me just share with you uh, uh, an insight here and how uh, just to kind of validate what I'm saying and it wasn't part of this but I want to throw it in here if we go to the book of Hebrew and uh, chapter 11, and I want to go to, uh, you know, of course, this is the famous chapter. Uh, people call it the, the Hall of Faith and the Chapter of Faith. But in this chapter 11, there's a, all these powerful things that people did uh, by faith. You know, and that's, of course, where we got our definition uh, uh, for faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. But there's an interesting portion of Scripture here that I want to end this with. In Hebrews 11, and let me find it here, look at verse 13 when you get a chance or if you have your Bible open. It talks about all of these individuals like Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses himself, Moses' parents, all these things that these people did by faith. It says in verse 13, these all died in faith, not in having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. So many of these people, they die in the belief that even though they didn't see some of these things manifest in their lives, they still were told to do whatever it is that they were told to do because they saw them, guess what, in their minds afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were just mere strangers or pilgrims on the earth. Now, I'm not sure if you understand what I just said there, but these people that I just mentioned there, they realized that they were just here on this earth temporarily. 
and, and the reality is me and you are too. Once again, I tell people that uh, God created us, but our parents made us. We all originated in the mind of God in heaven. The Bible even says in Ephesians chapter 1, I believe it is, before the foundations of the world. So these people had a faith that even though they didn't see these things manifest in their lives, once again, internally they did, you know, but they had assurance of it. And the reason why I bring that verse up is because sometimes um, we can have faith for something, and it can be a God thing, and patience is necessary. Now, these people died in their faith, so when we talk about patience, you know, uh, there are a lot of things that I'm currently having faith for based off of inside information. And by that I mean God told me these things. So now I can establish a hope in that. But just because He told me or just because I have a hope established in that doesn't mean that I just sit back and just wait for it to happen. There are things that I have to do, acts of obedience. You know, uh, there's a little statement that I use, the highest form or the highest act of faith is actions that are geared towards, you know, fulfilling that which God told you or showed you. So in other words, you just can't take a sit back and I'll, uh, I'll watch or wait till God happens. No, there are things that these people in that chapter had to do, and there are things that me and you have to do. So let's not be just guilty of putting our belief in them, but if it really came from God, ask Him the details. What do I have to do? in order to make or to manifest this thing that you're telling me to believe in. So once again, I hope that this small little teaching about what faith is and a little bit of what faith isn't has blessed you. Do me a favor and go to my website, www.julioalvaradojr.com and just you know, put a comment on the video or other videos that you may see that they blessed you. If you have any questions or comments, I'll try to answer as many as I can. And by the way, uh, let me encourage you while you're there to subscribe to uh, my website, just simply your, your, your name and your email address, and that way as I'm um, updating things and putting new things out there, you'll have information and get an invitation to check those out. I can guarantee you that it'll bless you. And the uh, other thing I wanted to do is, is just to kind of put myself out there. If uh, any of my teachings have blessed you or if you want to know more about them um, and just kind of, uh, you know, be more encouraged or enlightened or educated on them. I would love to come into your environment, your small group, your church, your conference, or whatever it may be that you may have, and share some of these deep insights that maybe go above and beyond what you're currently being taught or maybe what you've just simply been exposed to. One of the things that I'm aware of now and, uh, is that there is always a more accurate way so just because maybe I haven't been taught on faith the, may, the way that I'm understanding what God is showing me now, I'm, re, I'm understanding it in a more accurate way, and that's okay. You know, God will only show you what you're looking for. And that's, that, that, that comes with a hunger level. The state, one of the statements that I use is that your hunger level will determine your feed level. So in other words, the hungrier you are from God, the more He'll feed you, but with that comes responsibility. And that's for a different lesson. But the reality is God is so real. You know, I want to just end here with the fact that I can almost guarantee you, even though I don't know who you are, that I can guarantee you there's more to your life than what you're experiencing. And there's more to God than what you know. And as my website uh, banner says, life is supposed to be built from the inside out. So once again, connect with what I have to offer to help you to get to that place where you can live life according to God's pre-ordained and designed way for your life. Let me also encourage you to uh, share these resources with other people. Do me a favor and like my Facebook page. All of these links are there, YouTube, Twitter, and all that. And share these teachings with other people and be a blessing to them as well. So thank you once again. I hope that what I had to share today, you know, just encouraged you. Check out my other teachings. And uh, once again, sign up for my, my website so that you can get the updates as I put them out there. God bless you. And may you continue to live life according to God's original way of doing it. And that is from the inside out. Thank you.